Good afternoon, guys. Hope you've been enjoying this week. I know everybody's videos so far have been super informative, and I'm kind of excited to share my take on or can't be with you. I got cystic fibrosis. See, I've got cystic fibrosis. I myself am not on or can't be, and I have not been in any of the trials for it. Uh, basically, my story with it is that I had my transplant um, over six years ago now, and that was when they started coming out with a lot of the medications and the trials, even um, for the gene-targeted therapies. Um, so I don't qualify for the trials because I don't have CF lungs, um, and their main measuring points to see how successful the med is, is your FEV1 and your lung functions. Um, so I didn't qualify for any of those. So I don't have a super detailed education on these meds other than hearing how everybody else reacts to them and what works, what doesn't, what's doing well. Um, so basically my take on the medications um, is that we're definitely moving in the right direction. I think um, the shift has kind of, in research and even just treatments, has shifted from maintenance and just making every day, you know, a little easier to get through, breathe and stuff, to what can we do to slow the progression of the disease so that we, you know, don't have to get to the point of oxygen or sleeping with a BiPAP or as frequent IVs for infections or hospital stays. Um, and ultimately, I think that kind of leads up to people not needing transplants to deal with CF. Um, so I think these medications and the science behind it is just so cool. Um, and I've been following along with the Canadian government and what's been approved and what hasn't. And uh, we're kind of at a standstill. Uh, some provinces have approved coverage or of a certain amount for either Kaleidico or, or Canby. Um, others haven't. And sometimes it depends on your private insurance and it's kind of not the best situation in Canada, I would say. Um, with the new medication coming out that I don't remember the name of, the triple something, triple combo maybe, I don't know the proper terminology. Um, but there is not even a trial location in Canada because, not to say 100% this is the reason, um, but what I've kind of been told and I've seen floating around for reasonings is that, uh, you know, we do all the trials and we have the patients for the trials, but then no one seems to go on to actually use the medications. So the pharmaceutical companies are not getting a return on their investment in trials uh, just because we're kind of at a standstill between the government and the patients and what are we going to approve and how much are we going to approve funding wise. Um, so Canada's focus with a lot of these new medications coming out right now is awareness and advocating for patients to be able to get access to these meds, whether it's through a trial or an extended trial study or of hopefully eventually just under our drug plans. Um, and that's kind of the biggest kind of roadblock right now is we're kind of stuck. The government's willing to pay X amount, but the medications are really expensive. Not every CF patient has private insurance. Um, I'm not even going to try and compare it to the insurance set up in the States because I don't understand it myself. I try really hard, but Medicare and Medicaid and Obamacare and the care act for people. I know some of them are all the same, but, and I just, I don't know what's happening with, um, President Trump over there. So I just, it confuses me. 
and I've just decided to not try to understand it. Um, and if anybody has questions, I usually refer them to an American. Um, despite having my sister, she's American, lives in the States. She has two kids, so I kind of have an understanding of what was covered for her having kids, but obviously it's nowhere near the same as continual care for somebody with a disease. Um, so I can't even really make a comparison, I guess, of the stages in the process of government funding versus insurance versus, you know, out-of-pocket coverage. Um, I know that the Vertex company itself does have um, a compassionate care plan, I believe is what they call it, and I have a few friends that have been on or can be because of that plan. Um, so it, basically the pharmacy, or not the pharmacy, the um, Vertex, the pharmaceutical company, covers the cost of the medications and then either the disability plan that that person is on or so essentially the government um, covers the smaller percentage of it um, but they're not also you know handing that out to everyone because then they would not be making any profit on it and they need that profit to then go on and fund research for more improved medications um, so it's kind of this cycle of things and because I personally don't qualify for any of the medications right now um, I haven't been following it as closely in the news or reading the research papers um, I try and stay informed but right now I'm I'll admit I'm more focused on transplant side of things and just general awareness of CF and transplant um, so that's my kind of educational side of this um, Earlier in the week, everyone else did a fantastic job of explaining things and their opinions on it and their experiences with it. So hopefully you took their information um, and I'm kind of just sharing my thoughts. Um, so like a question that I get asked often with, um, you know, not necessarily qualifying for the medications right now, but if it were to be covered, would I consider taking them? And like my answer to that is absolutely. Um, I wish I could jump in a time travel machine and go back six years and, you know, get on a study for one of those medications. Um, but it may, like, I mean, it may have prevented me needing a transplant. It may not have. Um, my mutations, which I have only just learned about this year, <laughs> um, one of them is not common. I don't even know the proper terminology for the different groupings. Um, but I have been told one is a nonsense gene and one is other fairly common, I think. I don't even remember what they're called. I have them saved in a note on my phone. Um, so I can pull that up just for those who are curious if I can find it here. Um, but I'll keep talking while I'm pulling that up. So basically I 100% would get on a medication like that, um, Side effect wise, because I know a lot of people kind of say, well, that's their hesitation with, you know, do I get on this medication or are the side effects going to be worth it? I say absolutely. I mean, you go on it and you see how the side effects are. You see if you can handle them and go from there. If they get to be unbearable or your health is declining, then obviously maybe don't stay on it. Um, but I am definitely all for studies and new medications and kind of just giving them all, um, <clears throat> giving them a try before you kind of say no because of what might happen. Uh, so my mutations, I am I507 Delta. That's the one that I think is more common. And then I am Q493X. So because I also only just learned what my mutations are in the last year or so, uh, because it was never um, relevant to treatment or anything like that. Um, I was never in like a gene-specific therapy program. Um, I didn't know what they were, and they only just discovered the mutation that's actually from my dad's side um, after I was diagnosed, which I was diagnosed at 14 months old. So they didn't even know what my second mutation was. Um, <coughs> So I find all of it just super fascinating and like I genuinely feel like this is the right way to be going, working towards a cure. Obviously these meds are not a cure. 
Um, but I think they're going to be great for, you know, p less people needing transplant or pushing it off until you're, sorry, my dog is giving me kisses. Um, <laughs> it's going to like prolong our health and people are going to be able to stay healthier longer. They're not going to need a transplant. They may not have to go in hospital as much and they can basically have like a more normal health wise life. Um, the life expectancy can go up so that people don't have to think about that uh, when they're making life decisions and I think they're great I think we're still a ways away from them being um, you know foolproof I guess you know right now I have a bunch of friends who have also gotten on or can be but then they've had to come off of it because you know, it actually worked opposite for them. Their lung function declined or they lost weight or the side effects were just too much. So it's really a balancing act. Um, but I think research is headed in the right direction. And it's kind of exciting to see where everything is going. And I think the biggest thing that anyone can do, whether you're super educated on your mutations and the medications or not, is get involved in the advocacy side of things. You know, just push for this is a treatment that's going to improve not necessarily my life, but others with my disease. And I stand with them to kind of, you know, fight for access to these medications and for more research on these meds because that is our future. Um, so that's kind of my gist on Orcambi and beyond and Hopefully one of the new medications coming down the line will be applicable for transplant patients or one of them might actually work for, you know, decreasing our odds of rejection in transplant and also the side effects of CF. Like I have transplanted lungs, but I still have my CF pancreas, so maybe I won't have to take enzymes. Um, big picture, not a big deal. I take enzymes, but it would be nice to not have to if that medication could maybe also help my lungs stay in good shape. Um, so I'm, I'm very hopeful for the future and what is happening with CF and where medications are going and all the different researchers out there that are interested in CF and wanting to do research on medications for it, which is huge because I'm sure not very long ago, you couldn't even find enough researchers to fund a study. Um, so yeah, I, uh, that's my thoughts. Elle Bells, do you want to say hi? <laughs> and I think we're gonna sign off here and wrap it up so I feel like mine was not very educational but it was more of just me chatting and so hopefully you did learn a bit from earlier in the week because everyone has kind of been on different trials for medications as well um, I've shared my thoughts on it all and uh, hopefully you're enjoying your weekend and it's hopefully getting warmer wherever you are it's still very cold here in Canada, so I'm excited for spring, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, and <coughs> if uh, you haven't already, give us a share or a like. Yeah, do you like the peoples? She likes the peoples, sure. And stay tuned for next week when we get into talking about our nebulizer cleaning routines and what all we do with all of our medical devices we have at home. So great chatting with you guys and I hope you remember to stay salty.